<laughs> yeah, so you don't need to be connected to Zoom if okay. you're in the room. In. Yeah. Um, okay. So the only people who need to be connected to Zoom are people who are remote. Um, but everyone, everywhere will need to be connected to Menti. So if you go to menti.com, and this goes for um, Glenn and Julia and who else is there? Oh, no, that's just in the space. Oh. <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. Welcome. Welcome. Pull up a chair. Um, no, we we're just saying to everybody, if you're in the room, you won't need to be connected to Zoom, um, but you will need to be connected to Menti. And for the people following at home, so that's Glenn and Julia, um, connect to go to menti.com. Oh, no, just do, you do whatever and I'll work around you guys. Great. I was about to explain to other people that there's some shuffling happening, but what we've got in the background is this thing getting all you guys. Yes. So <laughs> our people back there, I'll explain my logic behind uh, setting the room up and how I came to the the shape of the room. So sitting on the bus this morning going, wait a minute, how is this going to work? <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm like rifling through pieces of paper and pencils that I keep in my bag and scribbling things madly on a bus. So it's like the 352, my auntie calls it the loser cruiser. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that's basically everyone that we're going to get in here at the moment. So thanks for coming along. Um, what well, I was basically the premise behind this thing. So I'm just going to, if you've got, if you haven't yet connected to it, so menti.com. Um, and the room code, so in case you can't see that at home, 152682 for those of us uh, in Hubei province <laughs> at the conservatorium. Um, so menti.com, 152682. Or I suppose any students in South Korea or Iran. Italy. Italy. No, Italy. Italy. Have they applied the ban on Italy? Oh, well, I don't think we're banning people from Italy. Down. It may they're have the most. To, yeah. US, well, they're not allowed out now, I don't think. Yeah, they've yeah, been exactly. locked into Italy. I don't think they've been locked out of Australia. No, they're just locked in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. In Italy yeah. Worst place so to still be locked in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Italy going into spring? Yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Plus two weeks off work. Oh, Especially in Milan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Chris is going to Venice? Oh, what a good time of year. Just before it gets too hot. I think this is near the time of yours isn't it? anyway so menti.com <laughs> menti.com 15 26 82 um so what i'm going to go through is basically tomorrow we've got um a business honors workshop and there's about 40 students that are involved in it and 11 of them are stuck in china um so what we're thinking is how do we continue to live this workshop but to make it actually worthwhile experience for those students who are over there we have a whole lot of technology that's available but we don't want to do something simple like oh let's just set up a zoom and share the slides and you can just watch along and not really participate in the experience. That's not cool. And then we might as well just record it and make it available afterwards. So what we wanted to do is add a degree of interactivity. And we have a whole lot of tools at the university that can facilitate that interactivity, but um, you need to make sure they work together really well and see how it works. So part of today is about breaking the tools that we've got, um, checking that the activities are kind of work in a group scenario um, with people on other sites. And, um, and also to show you guys a little bit of how these sorts of things work and the setup, the setup behind it. So, um, yeah, so the primary tool for delivering the slides is going to be Menti. So if you haven't gone there, menti.com, and I'll just bring that thing up again because I'm super worried about the people at home that they haven't been able to see at home conservatorium, SciTech. Uh, 152682 <laughs> is the code. The reason for that is um, we've got, I've got this Mac here set up with a camera pointing at me. And we think it's really important for the instructor to be visible on camera as well. So that they sort of, there's a bit of that personal connection to you there. Um, but also to have the slides behind you so that it's not, you know, you with the slide just on, laid over the screen, it's you and the slide there. But when you've got a camera set up like that, it can make it harder to read the slides, particularly if they're small text. The benefit of Menti is that it makes the slide visible on your screen as well. Um, if you have logged into Menti, you'll notice we've got down the bottom here our, our little things here. So let me give the rundown for this session. Um, when you see anything like on your screen, you should have a few little icons at the bottom. If you see something, you're like, oh, I really love this. This is your opportunity to share the love um, with everybody in the room, but also the people who are not in the room as well. So sharing the love, oh my God, you can see that happening. The next one here is a question mark. So if at any point during this session, you're feeling really confused about something and you're not sure what's going on, you hit the question mark. Can I get a couple of question marks here? Great. 
I don't like I'm, I'm encouraging you to. I, I hope that nobody is confused at this point. 152682, if that is a mark of confusion, but if you've got that. And the last one is the cool cat. So when you learn anything really new and exciting, that's when you hit the cool cat to share that with everybody in the room. Oh my God, I'm just walking away like a total expert now. I'm a cool cat. Um, the last one, of course, is the, um, the little question box there, which someone has asked. And this I haven't actually experimented with, with Menti. Oh, what's this all about, Pat? <laughs> So that's really great. I've wondered for so long now, how do I actually answer a mentee question when it comes in? So thank you very much, um, anonymous user. I really appreciate that. We're gonna mark that as answered. <laughs> and in what sense is a cat cool? Um, marked as answered. <laughs> oh, how cool is Menti Pat? Uh, and how cool is Menti Pat? It's pretty cool. It is cool as a cat. And if I could press the cool cat button, I would do that. So that's really awesome when you have a touch screen, um, which I've just discovered. I'm very excited about that function too. So. So there's your, like, your four basics, and we've been using those for a few lessons now um, in the library. For Discover Your Library, we use the, the three little interactive icons here and also the question mark in Menti. It requires a paid Menti subscription to use that, Menti Meter subscription, but if you want to use one, just hit me up because I paid for it for you. So if you want to experiment with it, you can borrow my subscription for a little bit um, until we hopefully subscribe. Um, so a couple of things here. This is just a bit of a mission statement about um, the objective of this, we want to spark joy for all of our learners, right? Um, we want to create engaging learning experiences for students who aren't here and who are here, and we want to generate connections between students. The cohort that we're talking about, the honours cohort, is particularly important because they're sort of getting into that um, last year of their undergraduate program. And also, research can be a really isolating experience because they're working, I mean, especially if you're talking about postgraduate research. But even in um, an honours dissertation, they're working on a project that is unique to them themselves. They're not, you know, they've got the guidance of their supervisor, but sharing that experience with other students is very, very important. So establishing a connection between those students is really crucial, especially if they're not in the country yet, um, because they're going to be doing this thesis over the whole year. We want to make sure that when they do get here, they've already built some kind of relationship with another student. So not all of our students are in Australia. Delivering online learning is, um, adds a whole lot of complexity to the learning environment. And that's kind of what today is about as well. We want them to walk away, um, we want to walk away with some rich data as well. So, um, you know, in academic service, that's something that we've been exploring. How do we collect data um, without necessarily throwing a survey at them and saying, we are trying to collect data from you. And this is something that Menti helps us to do. Um, and we want the students to walk away with some really rich data as well. They want to learn something on the way through um, and maybe actually walk away with some kind of product out of any workshop that they do. So often when I'm doing research, workshops I'm like I want you to walk out of here you know, with a set up EndNote library that already contains three references that you can use or if you've done some research workshops where it's just how do I do searching skills like ICPU for example I want to walk out of this workshop with a couple of um, sources that I'm actually able to start writing about right now so this is what we want um, people to leave with some useful data um, and it's possible to involve multiple tools and a bit of creativity so again this is what we're getting at today you can tell Pat doesn't remember what or who put his slides um, so first thing I'd like you to do is looking at Menti on all of your screens, describe online learning in a word. You should be able to put about four words. I think I set this up to So describe online learning as you understand it currently in a word. Crystal's joined us. Nice to see you. Julia's there. So Crystal, um, if you haven't already joined Menti, uh, menti.com uh, 1526.82 is the code. Describe online learning in a word. And we've got a bit of a chat here, so let's have a look. And Crystal, you might want to mute yourself because we're getting a whole lot of strange tappy noises at your end. Great, because we're like, why is Crystal coming up on the screen? It's because you're going. <laughs> <laughs> he needs an computer. Yeah, I know. Scratching. It was unusual. So here's some really interesting um, feedback that we've got here, and I'm going to sort of like preface my next slide with I wasn't expecting this, which is really cool. <laughs> so we've got flexible, interactive, dynamic, accessible, uh, self-paced, ubiquitous. Mm, interesting. So your big one that's coming through here is flexible. Online learning we think is um, super, super flexible and we think it's accessible because it does make it available to um, more people wherever they are and whatever their learning thing. Dynamic is really cool if we can make it dynamic. We've got a couple of questions popping up here. Let's have a look. 
please explain platonic beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that was to make you happy, Pat. Well, that, no, no, do you want me to like jump into to like? Too okay, so <laughs> about two and a half thousand years ago, there was a guy named Socrates, and he had a student Plato who believed in like theory of ideal forms, and we must not go into that. We'll mark that one as it. How do I go back to the answers section? I pressed enter, and it disappeared. Which answers section are we talking about? Oh, the one we just did. The one we just did. So if you hit refresh, go menti and put uh, 152682, it should give you the option to um, input more answers. If not, we're going to keep on for a while. It's not doing it for me. Yeah. Oh, once you put, oh, so once you put your four responses in. Even if you don't put four. Oh, then I must have said it to one. <laughs> 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 Sorry. I mean, if you put the, if you put the <laughs> Sorry, everybody. And then press enter, it's, um, it's fine. But if you do so there's all these beautiful, wonderful things that happen with online learning, but there are also downsides as well. So it can be potentially quite lonely. Um, people might feel sleepy. It's passive. So and this is a really big danger where you're actually not encouraging people to engage with you if you're doing online learning. You're just sort of throwing stuff at them. It can be unsatisfying. Um, hit or miss. So sometimes you have misses. Sometimes it's not engaging. And weirdly for um, a connected medium, it can make you feel disconnected. So these things... Uh -huh. Not spark joy. <laughs> I was expecting like this wall of like it's so awful because I'm normally dead against online learning unless it's really, really carefully um, engineered. So what I'd like you to do is go to your our session Padlet. So this is um, the URL here if you want it. Bit.ly forward slash. I mean, like you can see that at home. It should be big enough. Um, and also I've submitted this in advance. If you have already registered for Padlet, you can log in with your Padlet account. That means that you can comment with your name and you can edit things that you post on Padlet. Um, if you haven't, don't worry, you can still go through to that Padlet link um, and you can use it as an anonymous user. But obviously, if we were doing this in the classroom environment, now I've already sent for um, the honors group in the business school, I've already sent through login, uh, like the details of the Padlet so they can create an account at home. Um, but what I want you to do is create a new post and we should have a demo post in there. Title it with an idea that you wanna teach. So something that you're thinking about teaching, struggling to teach, maybe an experience that you want to have for students with peer learning advisors. So any kind of workshop or thing that you want to run or teach. Um, and then put a few points underneath it. So why is it difficult? What are you thinking about it? What's the big challenge that you have with it? Maybe you're going to teach Make a Strong Start soon and you're like, oh my God, what's this going to look like online? So something that you want to teach or a workshop that you want to run. And then if you feel out of photo or a file, you don't have to, but you can so there should already be a demo one in the Padlet for the people who've got in there. I've put my ugly mug. So let's give everyone a couple of moments to do that. Um, oh yeah. Julie says she can't get into Padlet. Oh, here's a really sensible thing. I'm just going to leave the chat on the screen so I can just talk at Julia. <laughs> so Julie says she can't get into Padlet. What kind of problem are you having there, Julia? You could even unmute if you felt like it. Sorry, it's just the um, the URL is not re not recognised in Padlet. Um, are you? Did everyone use this URL? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you might be that you're um, not able to see it clearly on the screen, and it is case sensitive. So yep. it's bit dot ly forward slash three lowercase c lowercase z capital R capital F lowercase x lowercase t. Hit enter and give that one a crack. My issue, Pat, is that I signed up for Pat last night, yesterday afternoon, mm. got an email saying they'd set up an account but never got a password. And every time I use the forgot password mechanism, mm. it keeps saying we've made a wrong turn. Oh, so really? And was that at sydney.padlet.org? Or through Padlet? Yes, Padlet? through the email you sent out. Yeah, I couldn't get that to work. Right, eh? Like, and it, it seemed not to work last night, mm. but then I was emailed like half an hour later. It must have been from someone in the team to have, have created an account for me. But okay, right. Now I can't log into that account. We might have a look at that offline. Yeah. But you're able to get into the anonymous 
at the moment. Yeah, I went through I that link. It worked for me, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't try to log in. So I still can't get into the link. You have to oh, really? Yeah. Thank you for this information, Julia. Did I send the link by email to you? You did, and I thought I'd pre-program that into my phone, and then when I've opened the app, yeah, in there I've dropped out. Yeah, um, and it's just a long URL. Actually, a tip is QR code it because I could scan the screen, and that would be. That's a great idea. Um, be... How about I bring that QR code on the screen right now, and you can try scanning? Oh yeah. Let me try it. Isn't that fancy? Hmm. Yep, done. Oh. Two, six. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just let's out. improvise on the spot. I really am glad that they have that function in here. So this is another cool thing in the Padlet menu up here. So I've actually shrunk this screen down so we can see more of people's Padlet responses. But if we tap up here to dot, 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 not dot, 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 um, the cog, and share is one of the options in here. Hey, maybe not that. Sorry, share. And then you've got down here, get QR code, and that will bring that up on the screen as well. Um, so I've embedded that QR code in the um, shared, the document I shared to the honours students as well. Well, maybe I created a QR code out of a Bitly link because I wanted to get stats on who actually registers in advance. That's, That's something I do. I put <laughs> Bitly links everywhere so I can see who's clicking. So, I really my question. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. What was the question we were answering on this Padlet? Sorry. Uh, the question was, put down an idea of um, something that you want to teach, like a session that you want to run, maybe a workshop, um, maybe it's a particular library subject that you're interested in teaching, and then a couple of points underneath it, and maybe a photo if you like. So some of the interesting ones that we've got here, using Medline for tech topics. So how do we teach Medline in a quick and easy, um, an easy way? And what I'll get you all to do now, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the next slide is, no, I'll just leave that for now. I'm just going to give you a, have a quick look through some of them, not all. Um, so I've got making information literacy fun and engaging. How do we impart important IO knowledge in today's study? Look at this cool little image that we've got here. And we've got some, um, oh, look here. That's my serious face. Here's a photo <laughs> of me thinking deeply about those problems. Um, Games-based idea, how do we add some images there? So the cool thing about Padlet is that people are able to comment on other people's ideas. And what we do in the business honours class normally is we have everyone put their honours, like everyone gets a sheet of paper, like those big sticky, sticky notes. They get their post-its and they write their research question or the topic that they're interested in focusing on for their research project on that piece of paper. And then they just start brainstorming. What are key ideas? What's things that I know? What's things that I want to know from my thesis onto that piece of paper? And everyone gets a chance to sort of wander and have a chat. And you find that students will group according to discipline, so the work and org students will stand together, the finance students will hang out together, accounting will be over here, marketing over here, but they get a chance to see what each other's product, uh, projects look like and to see some of those key search terms that come up. So what this gives us the opportunity to do is to simulate that um, in an online environment. And you've got this commentary down the bottom here. Yes, this, amazing. So we've got love hearts that we can just start throwing across here and we start seeing a whole bunch of engagement happened between students here and over there. The digital experience isn't compromised. I would still have people, so tomorrow I'm planning to still have um, a printed sheet of paper that I'll hand out, probably not the big giant slide, so people can still work analog, because I'm a massive believer in working analog. But that can be provided to the students overseas. The conversations can still happen between people in person and over Zoom, but they'll also happen on this wall as well. All right, so our next question. What are the biggest barriers for online learning? So this is gonna be a, a Menti question. Jump back over to Menti. What do you think are the biggest barriers for online learning? I'm going to say that I wish every lecture theater in the university was a touch screen. <laughs> this is so easy. <laughs> I'm just going, oh, I'm going to fumble over this keyboard for a while, but. Okay, so we're getting some interesting things going up here. Unreliable network connections, amazing. This is why it's really important to think about the technologies that we use overseas. There's a really cool website, which I'll share with everybody, um, which allows you to test any URL to see whether it will work through the firewall in China. Um, Menti, Padlet, and Zoom all work, which is really nice to know. Um, keeping engagement, so it's easy for students to zone out when they're not in the room, this is so true. But also, if we've got questions that we need to take, unmute, ask us the question. 
Um, I think really important thing with students, if you're sort of throwing questions to people on the floor, um, having a mic, so I've seen this done in another class, having a mic that can be taken around the room so that students can actually hear if I'm sitting in another, you know, if I'm at the conservatorium on Zoom, that I can actually hear the questions that are being asked, that it's not just sort of like an empty thing um, and like a space of time where nobody's saying anything. If that mic is not an option, so I'm going to bring in my fancy podcast mic tomorrow, turn up the game a little bit. Um, if the mic isn't an option, then it's really, really important for a person standing at the front of the room to repeat the question when it gets asked so that people at home get the benefit of that. So keeping engagement really important, translating in-person experience with tech. Everyone's tech has to be working right. Absolutely. The human connection, it still feels really stilted. I agree. And that's something that we've got to overcome with digital tech. Zoom goes a big, long way towards doing that. Um, text heavy. Like, I really like the idea with Padlet that you add an image or something that you actually get some stuff uploaded to it as well. And there are other tools that we can experiment with in the short term, given everything that's going on. This would be a really cool way. Um, too many tabs and software to open. Yes, super important as well. And this is why I think the setup of the room, which I'll get to in a second, is really crucial. Um, so this is really awesome. Thank you for these pieces of feedback. Oh, look that, make a theme. So in pairs. So um, this is where Crystal and Julia, you guys might want to chat to each other on um, Zoom chat, but in pairs in the room, uh, and a three up the back. Is that going to work? Yeah, so a three up the back there. Um, I want you to choose a Padlet post and brainstorm, brainstorm some ideas together for teaching that concept. So how would you teach that particular Padlet post? And then leave your comments underneath. So a couple of really creative comments underneath each Padlet. I'll give you... Um, we're doing really quickly here, so we'll just give you like three to five minutes. So Julia and Crystal and Glenn, you guys might want to chat to each other using the Zoom chat. Okay. So um so is this are you thinking about this for like teaching staff like comments and like teaching staff how to make yeah, we could yeah, do like, like, like a so Are you okay with using that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can like have a little bit of a Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
so um, we could have like encourage <laughs> experimentation, yeah. Mm. Like this, yeah. yeah. And also, yeah. 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 I think it's just sure. Yeah. 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 Ye
so that I know that definitely all the conversations going to happen there or are we yeah. using the other mechanism? Yeah, yeah. Um, what other, anybody else in the room, ideas that you had? About this experience or? Um, yeah, let's move to the experience, I guess. Because, yeah, like, I've just, we, we started kind of talking about like ways that you could approach the teaching. Mm -hmm. um, like we were just talking about EndNote as uh, the topic. Um, and just, you know, ways to get past the kind of like point and click stuff and get to some of the more meat stuff, like scenarios where people are kind of having problems and things like that. So, yeah. I don't know, there's definitely, like I, I was thinking, you know, you could use the Zoom for the screen shares, you could have a look at somebody's setup, and then you could go to Padlet to like look at brainstorm solutions to their situation or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But I also like the idea of if you could get people into a little subgroup, if there was a way to do that, I think that'd be really good for that sort of thing. I think the issue I had with Zoom as a screen share, because when, so this is the map that I, I, this is what I drew on the bus, but then turned it into something prettier. Um, the issue I had with using Zoom for the screen sharing is that when I'm switching applications, yeah. that becomes really intensive for me and you've got downtime. Yeah. Whereas um, one, of, one of the things that I said to the students in the thing that I sent out was, we'll be using a couple of different things. So you might want to have a tab open on your browser for each of them. Or you'll have Zoom running in the background so you can see us. So just resize the screen so you can see if you want to see me for most of it. But the good thing about having Menti is that they'll see the slide yeah. on their screen there. They can respond there. They can ask all their questions down here like this one. Maybe this, getting started with breakout rooms. Hey. So this might be something to explore as well. Um, thank you. Oh, did I that. Can't do that. Thank you, anonymous person. We'll find out. We'll find out afterwards who they were. Well, I just got to get the Menti code again. Yeah, um, that's the thing that's yeah. tricky. If 15, you like, browse away from Menti to go to Padlet, and then you know, do you mean browse away like just switch tabs or no, close like a tab. Yeah, you uh, have to re-log in. There could be classroom disruption yeah. if you're getting everyone back on track about getting into Menti because you're exactly. using multiple technologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, the issue with this sort of stuff is that you've got to have it really clearly spelled out. What's it going to look like for yeah. me? What's the experience going to look like for the students? This is why I was sending out this, as many logins as I can have set up in advance. So the Padlet, it's great because you can have a, consist, a persistent URL and send it out in advance. Um, the Zoom room, you can have your ID or you can fix an ID for the room in advance. Menti generates the code at the start of the session. So that's the only one where you're going to have to say, you're going to have to log in at the time, but having that Menti slide set aside for you, logging into the room early, having everything ready to go in Menti is one way to address that. So what that allows us to do, and the reason I use um, three systems for this is, Padlet is um, a good place to sort of build a conversation, but it doesn't give you the interactivity of the slides like this. Menti doesn't send the slides to people or the audio, like, like it doesn't send audio and, and a recording of the person talking. So Menti does part of the picture. It allows this responsiveness and interactivity but it doesn't do the depth that you want from Padlet and it doesn't do the actual communications that Zoom does. Zoom can do the screen share, but it doesn't do that rich interactivity that other systems do. So what I've sort of thought is, is these, this is how we use these three systems to create as interactive an experience as possible. Um, when I was actually doing the map on the screen there uh, today, I've got, so this is like the desk. Um, so the room that I'm thinking of in the business school, you're gonna have a, lec a lecture PC connected and what that's going to be doing is Mentimeter and Padlet only. So that's the equivalent of this thing here. What I'll have is my Mac sitting there like this, which is filming me and the screen. So if students only want to watch me and the screen, they can do that. They don't actually need to look at Menti. You can see most of the slides that are coming up there. They can have Menti open on their phone to do the reaction there. And that's one way of staying persistently logged in on Menti. So when they're browsing away, they're not losing all that interactivity. That's what students have to think about. And it's also probably for me to include in the thing. Maybe you want to have Menti open on your phone instead. Um, what we've got in this room, fortunately, is this camera capturing everyone here so that people watching from the corner, watching from other sites, still get to see that they're part of a classroom. They still feel like they're part of that experience. That's much harder in a lot of our rooms in the university because we don't have that camera set up pointing at everyone. So one solution that you could think about tomorrow and that I have seen done is bringing along another device, maybe your phone or an iPad or something like that and have that pointed at the audience. So that at any time, so that's just connected to the room as well as a, a user. So at any time, someone who is connected via Zoom can actually go, oh, I can see everybody else sitting there working, so there's some connection. They can be a part of that broader chat. I can use this to watch what's happening with the, the Zoom chat as well, so where people are talking to each other on that other side. Um, and then this is what, I mean, I like, <laughs> apologies for the, the student who looks really sort of like <laughs> down in the dumps, <laughs> yeah. but, you know. Let's sniffling, they've got coronavirus, you know what I mean? Like, this is, 
this is them blowing their nose sort of as the, <laughs> as the, as the thing sort of comes through here. But, but what you can see here is that Zoom is pulling in two things for them to look at, the audience and the slides. And then they've also got um, their browser or their device open, which has got Nancy and the Padlet connection as well. Cool. So that's the way that would be structured. Um, Are you going to do any, is anyone like going to be doing this with you? Or is it, you just this is solo. And that's why I'm doing wow. this thing as well. Okay. Because if you want to monitor this, it's, yeah. a, it's a thing to keep coming over here and checking like this. And I've been making notes as we go through of things that I'm like, for tomorrow, remember to say this. All questions should come through this because yeah. it pops up on the screen and I will see it. Yeah. Whereas if it's over there, I've got to make sure I'm going over and having a look and going, oh, this is the problem they're having. See, right now, Julia's saying can't hear. I mean, I don't even know why that's happening. Yeah, yeah. And we're getting to the end, so I'm not going to fix it. Yes, lock in your wayfinding <laughs> early on. Like, yes, use exactly. this for this, use this for this. You, yeah. And, yeah, and I mean, you did, you could ask, ask questions by Menti, but just like, Ask all your questions. Via Menti, Menti. because it just pushes it through here and yeah. we, we've got it on the screen. The other really cool thing about Zoom, and this is what I was going to say about um, data collection, we can download session feedback from this. So the usual um, form, which I'll have at the very end. So scan a QR code, our usual um, ASIO stats or whatever. So we can get our session feedback. Slide analytics. So the advantage to using this is that on every slide, when someone does a heart reactor question, react a cool cat or a question, all of that is being downloaded in the background into a spreadsheet in Menti, which you can download. So you can see which slide is triggering people, where the questions came through. You can review them later if you need to. It's all automatically saved for you. You can set Zoom to automatically export the video recording. So this Zoom session is being recorded in the cloud right now. So Zoom sort of goes and grabs everything up there. So if you want to review your own teaching practice or how the session seemed to work, or maybe there was some sort of conversation that was happening and you want to capture something out of that, you've also got a Zoom recording that you can export. Um, and that way we can share the class content with everybody. And the other thing that I didn't put on here, which is actually really, really cool, um, in Padlet, you can export this entire sheet as a PDF. So when the whole class has done all this work together, you just hit export up the top here, share, I think it's, that's the one, save as PDF. So you can show, save that whole thing as a PDF or as an image, and you've captured all that Padlet data. Now for a session like this, that's a really valuable way for us to share with everyone in this room all these ideas about doing online teaching or some kind of um, interactive teaching across a whole bunch of different programs that we've done in this last half hour. For the students who are doing um, their honours stuff, they can always log back into this if they want, but then you can say, hey, here's some ideas that we shared with each other that you might want to pursue. You've got all that commentary down there and cool feedback that everyone has shared with one another. So that's pretty neat. Um, and I think that wraps it up. Oh yeah, your feedback. So if you want, you can go to this, um, bit.ly link down the bottom here, or you can scan the QR code um, and give feedback on this half hour session that we have just done, which adds to our cool feedback. I'm so impressed. You're not going to have a wingman. I can't wait to see how this goes. I know. I was, gonna, I was gonna say a lot of the Zoom stuff we've been doing have required two staff. Yeah. One to moderate questions mm -hmm. that are coming in from the floor or via Zoom yeah. and the trainer trying to do both of that at the same time. So we, um, Emma and I ran a, uh, Zoom webinar for um, InfoSystems last year. And what we actually had was a whole bunch of um, ALLs logged in in the library, putting in like fake questions in case students weren't there and weren't inclined to ask questions. And then Kawe did of course ask um, a question that I found too difficult. <laughs> so thankfully, thankfully Emma moderated it away. So we just didn't ask it at all. Uh, but it was also really basic, right? It was like, oh, how does something about library search work? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> What the fuck's Dewey Decimal? Um, so, um, so yeah, there's the moderation element like that. But I think if you're like, and what I'm thinking here is how does one person run this class? If we're lucky enough to have the resources to have two people in a classroom, so much easier because tech can be complicated. But I think this demo is basically to say, yeah, I mean, there's a few little things, but this experience can run reasonably smoothly if you put in the pre-work to think about how it's going to be set up and you do things like, okay, where are the questions going to come to? Are you using the tech um, in the optimal way? And maybe do a run through. Which is what this is. Yeah, like, no, so no, tomorrow no, I see no, there and go, great, uh, all your like, questions through here, please. I would say if I was going to do this, there's no way I would do it unless I've done at least one run through. Oh, yeah, don't do it cold. <laughs> Even if somebody has a plan for how it's going to work, I'd want to actually do it yeah. before. Yeah, which is another cool thing about this space and having so many library staff. Mm. Mm. That's all. Everyone cool from so Zoom? So you're um, going to be in Abercrombie? Yeah. They have microphones in most of their rooms. <laughs> Zoom work better because it means people on Zoom can hear verbal stuff from the difference room. is going to be because I'm going to use that for the Zoom. Oh, I so see. not the lectern. Yeah, so yeah, the, okay. the host will be, I mean, 
it is actually worth <laughs> me thinking about. Actually, no, no, no. Um, I might host from that one. Yes. And mute and pull the sound from the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. Thank you. This is why I'm glad we're doing this session. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, the, the reason I'm hosting from that one is that the host will dominate the feed. Yeah. So I want to make sure my um, image is the one coming up there. But then we're going to have to think about how we make it draw the sound from the other one. So there are settings in Zoom about whether or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want the sound, I don't want it to pick up the sound from the lectern and then bring up the lectern Zoom, if you know what I mean. Right. Because you know how when Zoom I think hears, it's going to use the lectern because that's how the sound is connected. It's either taking sound from... But no, I'm saying yeah. is because right now this is also connected to Zoom mm. as a guest Minimize and I've muted it. Yeah, yeah. Minimise it up. Yeah, so I don't know. I'll just get rid of it. But then what I'd have to do is switch off so there's a setting in there which yeah, goes, um, when it picks up my sound, it makes me yeah. be the dominant thing on the screen. What I want is for that to be the case, but it not, doesn't take the sound from there. Mm -hmm. So I'll just mute my outgoing sound. And then I will sit down and work this out on a piece of paper on a bus. Most of this already four times. <laughs> uh, oh, that's going to be at 1 till 3.30 tomorrow. So it's going to be a really long session as well. And that's the other thing to think about is like devices running out of power yeah. um, and also screens timing out. So I had to make sure I switched off um, sleep mode on that so that it doesn't yeah. time out after. I'm just thinking, are you, like if we wanted to check in on it, could we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Anne's watched this session before. Yeah. Um, so she came to it last year. So they're really cool about people coming along to it. Because it'd just be interesting to see how it goes in practice. Yeah, so like, totally. Let us know if you want someone to remotely moderate or anything as well. Yeah, if you want, like, or tune in or whatever. Like, it's going to be half of it is really funky, um, researchy stuff. So it's a little like wild. Have you attended one tune before? The honest ones? We're okay. I'm trying to think because a few people have been into them before. The first half of it is really fun stuff. And the second half, oh, say, like, the second half is not fun. The second half is M note. Um, so <laughs> tune in for the first half. And then, uh, um, but anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's really cool stuff. So if you want to sort of yeah. pop in and have a gander, and obviously you can be anonymous, it's a really cool idea. So how do you approach the M note stuff? Because we were just kind of talking about that. Uh, M note's probably going to be, because um, the new M note um, slide deck, I can send that through yeah. if you want to see it for the M note um, introduction to M note workshop. So we ran that the other day. Um, and that slide deck is actually structured in some ways quite similarly to, um, you see all those slides that have like your turn on it. Yep. So we've got like your turn <laughs> slides. There's like your turn slides um, and important slides and then there's demo slides. So some slides would be like, go and demonstrate this thing. Then there's like information if people need information. Then there's like, here's a really important thing that you need to pay attention to. Yep. Here's a your turn slide. So it's structured in a way that students are like, oh, okay, right, there's this visual cue on the way through. This is what we're doing now. I've tried to keep instruction as much as possible to a minimum, yeah. um, just because I hate point and click. But also, um, I think there is still a, ne a need for some of it with EndNote because yeah. it's not the most intuitive piece of software. And have you tried to do this? Did you say you tried to do this virtually before? No, the EndNote one? Yeah. No. So, this and fun new? fact, oh. um, I had, uh, so the EndNote workshops that we set up this year, um, they're booking out. So the first one, I said max enrollment's 40. We had 40. Um, the next one's coming up for Celia on the 18th of March, and it's 40. But I had someone email me about the April one, which is, you know, still ages away, and it's like two-thirds full. And someone emailed me and said, oh, I noticed in, um, that there's a webinar version. And I'm like, what? I didn't, there's no such thing. There's no webinar version. But, like, a LibCal automatically sends a thing saying um, would, if you webinar offered to do a webinar version or something like that. So anyway, I spoke to her and I'm like, you know what, I'll, we'll try. We'll see what we can do about setting up a webinar version. And if the EndNote thing tomorrow works, which I didn't even realise is a good practice run for the EndNote thing for Celia, because I already talked with Celia about whether she was comfortable with like using Zoom, um, then that would be a good model to do for that one. I'm definitely going to tune in then. Yeah. Hey, Pat. Hey. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, how do I tune in tomorrow via Zoom? Because I'll be at Westmead again. I will, uh, it's actually the same, I use the same Zoom room number for all of my stuff. So if you just say, you, like, the time, I'll send it through to everyone in this room, put it on. Um, at the time that this is on, just log into the same room number and you can watch the whole thing from there. And you can tune in with Menti and all that sort of stuff. The more the merrier, actually, I think, with those sorts of things, because the students themselves are going to be working on their own 
honors project on the Padlet. Um, so you can probably watch that. I wouldn't necessarily comment on the Padlet thing because like they're business students who are doing their business thing, but it's a good chance for you to sort of see the sorts of things that students are thinking about, which is really cool. Um, but definitely feeding into the mentee process, the mentee slides, that's a really valuable thing. You can have as many people as you want engaged in this stuff because this is more um, operating at a, uh, like a theoretical level, but also like what is library and what is research. So um, the more the merrier. Cool. Thanks, for the invite, Thanks, Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thanks everyone who tuned in. It was really good to test it. Thank you. I hope the con is great today. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, we around music. I'm always happy. See you, Glenn. Bye. See ya. See ya. Bye. Thanks, Pat. Now I need to end meeting. End meeting. End meeting.